You know how you go to the grocery store and you're in line and then somebody stands too close to you and you're just like, just, just back away, just, just four inches, dude, just back up a little bit and they get closer and you clear your throat or you, you move around like, maybe if I do this or, or something, maybe they'll get the hint because if I say back off, it's gonna come across as rude. Uh, that unease or so, permeate everything around you with that. That's what it feels like. You just, you can't point to any specific thing. And then when the firework goes off, you're like, oh, it must be that. It's gotta be the firework. And so then you were thinking, see that firework's making me angry. <sighs> there goes another one. Oh, that firework's getting me angry. And it goes up a little bit more. You just added another log to the fire, mm. as it were. And <sighs> oh, there's another one behind you. Ah, that one's making me angry. That's one type of unease, just constant irritation about the people around you. There's a different type of unease that, this one I was able to deal with somewhat. But there's a different one that is more disconcerting uh, for me. And that was, say, driving down the street and a kid throws a, a cherry bomb next to the sidewalk as I'm driving. Doo -doo. Boom! Not as loud as an IED by any means, not even close. But the reaction that I had was very much similar. Half of me wanted to stop that car and find the kid that did that. Do you know what you're doing? <laughs> I was furious. I was cursing. I even started pounding the seat next to me. I just started hitting the seat, just cursing out the windows. You blankety, 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 but I, fortunately my feet were like, just get out of here and <laughs> just keep driving, just keep going. Mm. We're walking down the street in an apartment complex and the kids would set off a firecracker and just like right now and I was like, pow. <laughs> you know, I would turn around ready to fight something. Just like that. Um, I would even jump sometimes, like five feet over. Just, I mean, a solid jump land in a crouch position. Like that was a different response than my constant irritation at all the noises that was at first was relatively easy to get over because I just had to, that's not an AK-47, that's a firecracker. That's not a loom rounds, that's regular fireworks, you know. That was easy to get over. The instant startle response to ready to fight something when it jumps out at you was longer and more scary because because there are automatic reflexes, how do you change a reflex? Right. I was like, well, this is permanent. <laughs> this must be permanent. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna be a crazy guy forever. And that was the sense of hopelessness. And if you have a sense of hopelessness, why try? Why put in the effort? And that's not true. It isn't permanent um, because there is a thing called habituation. Organisms have learned don't react to things that don't need to be react to. How do we learn that? Well, over time you realize that there's no danger to it. So you quit reacting. So firecrackers, kids, pow. Why would I have a startle response to that? But that takes mental energy. And you don't have that mental energy more because you're already reserving half of it to be ready to respond to anything around you. Exhausting. That it is exhausting. state of vigilance it sounds is exhausting. exhausting. You, you can't study for school very well because you don't feel like it. There's a higher instance of um, troops with PTSD who weren't in combat. Well, imagine living on a base someplace where you don't know what's outside the wire. You can't go outside the wire. You have to stay on base and there's random attacks, random times of the day, mortar attacks, you don't know where. And just when you think everything is good to go, hey, there were some suicide bombers in a chow hall in another base somewhere. There are even veteran activists out there that would say, once you have PTSD, it's permanent. All you can really do is learn how to cope with the symptoms or how to live with it or manage your symptoms. I hate that. Uh, manage your symptoms, what does that mean? Take pills every day and, uh, no, it is not permanent. Just based on the simple fact of habituation, it makes sense that your PTSD would be worse 10 years later down the road than the year when you came back because you've keep added 10 years of bad thinking to this. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, you've, you are digging yourself into a hole. But if you give yourself some way to find some space with trusted person, trusted therapist, trusted somebody to enter into that uneasiness, you have to go into it a little bit. Not full blown, but a little bit. 
And then when you're there, go, okay, this, I don't like this. <laughs> what do I like about this? Okay, let's think about this. What am I thinking? And uh, do as much as you can. And if you have to back away a little bit, back out some. But keep going into it. Keep putting one foot into that discomfort. And you'll find out that over time, you'll be back here to a healthy state. I am better now than I was before I went to Iraq. Mentally, physically, emotionally, I'm better now than I was. Um, it's, it's not permanent. Uh, PTSD is not permanent. There is help for it. You just have to do the work. You can't always run from it. Sometimes running is the best thing. There's too many people. There's 50 people in the grocery store. There's Justin Bieber music playing on the music. I've got to get out of here now. <laughs> all right? <laughs> you go home, regroup, you come back, you know, and they're playing ACDC. It's all good. Many of us who are having these issues, we don't spend that time looking into our thought patterns. It, us, it is very simple. Something happens, and I feel this. There's a disconnect there, and we're not looking at that middle ground in between. And that is where the worst going to come in, because what we're likely then going to do is just uh, what, unplug from this. Whatever it is, screaming kids, fireworks, dogs, yep, yep, Justin Bieber, unplug from this, and this won't happen. And so we end up leaving everything. We don't go to anything, anything at all, and that our families miss us. Mm -hmm. And they begin to resent not only us, but the military and everything else because of, of this. Mm -hmm. So for the families, understand that this middle ground is what is, is important for us. And the soldiers and, and veterans also, that's where the work is. That's where you're going to change and stuff is between the stimulus and response, there is a choice. You have the ability to make that choice. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where the hard work is at. Mm -hmm. And if you do that, you will be able to listen, walk down the street with Justin Bieber music playing, with screaming kids all around you and fireworks, and not bat an eye.